It's doubtful if any sport event has provided as many varied thrills as the annual 500-mile race in Indianapolis. This year's International Classic on May 31st will be no exception, judging from the record entry list of 80 cars. And while the current crop of drivers and mechanics continue their frantic preparations to get ready for the 30-second running of the colorful spectacle, we've asked two Speedway heroes of the past to describe a few of the dramatic incidents which thrilled the fans in former years. They're Tommy Milton, the first two-time winner of this race, approximately 25 years ago, and Wilbur Shaw, who scored three victories before coming president and general manager of the Speedway in the fall of 1945. Now, what do you consider the Speedway's greatest all-time thrill, Wilbur? Oh, I'd hesitate to pick out one specific incident, Stan, but I don't believe there's anything in the world of sports that surpasses the thrill of the flying start at the Speedway each year. It has everything, speed, suspense, danger, and a lot of that indefinable something called color. When those 33 cars roar down the main stretch behind the pace car and swing into that first turn, the spectacle actually leaves you breathless, and you get the same tingling sensation each year, regardless of how many times you've seen the start of that race. Well, I think the race fans would rather hear about individual drivers, though, Wilbur. Uh, what about some of the thrills of the early races, Tommy? It has been more than a quarter of a century, Stan, since I started my racing career at Indianapolis, and what probably is the most talked about incident in Speedway history occurred even several years prior to that time. It was in 1912, and Ralph De Palma, always a favorite with the fans, was ro roaring toward what appeared to be certain victory. With only two laps to go and a five-lap lead over his nearest rival, De Palma broke a piston on the back stretch. When his car failed to come out of the north turn on schedule, the crowd of 80,000 became restless. They feared that their hero had cracked up. But a few minutes later, De Palma's gray Mercedes moved slowly into the main stretch at a snail's pace, and the fans could see that Ralph was pushing it toward the finish line. They began to applaud, and when De Palma smiled and waved at them in acknowledgement, he was given the greatest ova ovation which I believe any driver ever received. No one who saw the incident will ever forget it. Well, what dramatic incident remains most clearly in your memory, Wilbur? Aside from the thrills which affected me personally, Stan, I believe the most exciting moment during my early career happened in my first race in 1927, when Norman Batten's car burst into flames on the main stretch. You were in that race, too, weren't you, Tommy? Uh, yes, I was, Wilbur, and it's interesting to note that your first race that year turned out to be my last race because I retired from racing that summer to devote all my time to business. I remember that Batten was coming down the main stretch at more than 100 miles an hour in his Miller Special when the gasoline tank suddenly caught on fire. Flames at least 10 or 15 feet long trailed from under the speeding car, and Batten had to crawl out on the cockpit in order to keep his legs from being burned. But he realized he couldn't jump without endangering the lives of other drivers on the track. He finally managed to get into a kneeling position on the tail of the car, leaning forward to grasp the wheel. And as the huge crowd of 150,000 held its breath, he guided the flaming car to the south end of the pits where the fire was extinguished. Well, you've had several close calls, Wilbur. Uh, which was the most exciting one? I believe it was 1931 when I went uh, clear out over the wall in a big Duesenberg. I was running a little too fast on the back stretch, trying to pass a group of three or four car other cars before we got into the northeast turn, and I didn't quite make it. My car hit the top of the concrete retaining wall and went right on over, tearing down the telephone wires, which were strung outside the track on standard telegraph poles. But my, uh, some miracle, uh, I wasn't seriously injured. The hospital staff uh, treated a few bumps and bruises and then let me go. So I wandered back to the pits to see how other members of the Duesenberg team were doing. I talked with Fred Duesenberg for a moment, and uh, when he found that I wasn't hurt, he called Jimmy Gleason in, and uh, for the remainder of the race, I drove in Gleason's car, and we finally uh, managed to finish in sixth place. Well, it's been a pleasure to hear Wilbur Shaw and, and Tommy Milton describe a few of the thrills of former race years. Beside the 500-mile series, it has been packed with dramatic incidents since its very start back in 1911. And I believe race fans can rest assured of another spectacular international event on May 31st. 